in 407 AD, the peace in the Roman-controlled Iberian Peninsula was disrupted, having recently migrated from the Middle Danube, crossed the Rhine, invaded and pillaged Gallia, Vandals, Alans and Suebi traversed the Pyrenees mountains, entering and ravaging the fresh Roman lands of Hispania for two years, they soon sought to settle in the province. Some fighting occurred between the Suebi and the Alans before the former established themselves in the southwestern part of Galatia, making Bracara their capital. A friendly people named the Buri also settled in the region. Once in their new lands, the first interactions with the locals were relatively peaceful. Just as most other migrating tribes, the Suebi became a new distinct elite, not initially blending with the population. By that time, a civil war had broken out among the Imperials. General Gerontius and Usurper Maximus rebelled from their power base on the Iberian Peninsula. They were soon crushed by the central government. Later, this same government settled the freshly arrived Visigoths in Aquitania. As a new federated ally, they were ordered to dislodge the clandestine barbarians in Hispania. Both Alans and Selingi Vandals were destroyed as a political entity, restoring Roman control over the valuable southern provinces. Meanwhile, the Suebi and Hasdingi were left alone in their mountains. As the Alan and Selingi survivors joined the Hasdingi, a war started in Galatia. The Suebi were defeated, surrounded and almost destroyed if not for a timely imperial intervention. The Vandals were pushed back, fled and reoccupied the province of Baetica. However, when another army composed of Goths and Romans arrived to finish them off, it was defeated. A Swabian army launched an attack through Lusitania, soon clashing with the Vandals. Their king, Geyseric, repulsed Hermegarius who drowned in the Guadiana River during his flight. Thankfully for the Suebi, the Vandals later seized an opportunity to cross the sea, reaching the province of Mauritania. Now king of the only Germanic power in Hispania, Hermeric moved to assert total control over Galatia and went to war with the barely Romanized locals. This decade saw frequent warfare and diplomacy in the region. Fierce Galatian resistance eventually led to a clear peace treaty between the two sides. Hermeric, fatigued by constant warfare, ceded the solidified kingdom to his capable son, Reshila. The new king wasted no time and attacked Baetica, where he vanquished an enemy army led by a local leader, the next year saw the conquest of Emerita, the capital city of Lusitania. After that, Myrtilis also fell, and the Roman ambassador Censorius fell captive to the Suebi. The conquest of Lusitania was completed, and Rechila followed up with the invasion of Baetica, where his palace was conquered. The Imperials had until now somewhat supported the Suebi. However, such a rapid conquest changed their stance. With those massive territorial losses, it was clear that the Romans could no longer ignore the Suebi. Some resources were allocated to the peninsula to defend it, until a large Romano-Gothic force under the command of Vitus marched towards Baetica. Precilla was once again victorious, stopping Roman counterattacks for a time. Relations with the Vandals of Africa were not great either. All that meant that the Suebi were now diplomatically isolated. After a decade of successful expansion, King Rechila passed away. His son, Rekaya, took power. The first Nicene Christian king among the pagan Suebi 
he was still hostile to the Romans. The diplomat Sensorius was executed and Recaia became the first barbarian monarch to mint his own coinage. The king attacked the locals in Vasconia, then reached the Gothic Aquitania where he married a daughter of Theodoric I. Now allying with the Bagodai rebels in Tarraconensis, he invaded and ravaged the province. After some negotiations, a short period of peace followed. This interlude was broken at the death of Emperor Valentinian III when Recaia invaded for renewed plundering. There were diplomatic protests against such an action, but these were ignored. For the Imperials, it was the last straw. Gothic King Theodoric II turned hostile to Recaia, and under the orders of Emperor Abitus, marched to war in Hispania. The Suebi met the large force of Goth, Frank and Burgundian federated allies on the Urbicus River. Recaia was decisively defeated and routed. Wounded, the king fled west, leaving Bracara to be plundered by the enemy. Theodoric soon caught up with him in Portus Cali. Recaia was killed, ending the succession line of Hermeric and plunging the kingdom into chaos. Ayulf emerged as a leader in Galatia, possibly as a Gothic puppet or deserter. Theodoric, for his part, went south, sacking many cities. Learning about the deposition of Emperor Avitus, the Goth returned to Gallia. Ayulf was already dead by now, and the Suebi elected Maldras as their king, while in the same year, Framta took power in the north. As Madras plundered the south of the kingdom, the territory became somewhat divided between Galatia and Lusitania. Framta did not survive for long, but the Suebi were not to be reunited. Indeed, the followers of the dead king elected Richimund as their new warlord. Following a decisive battle, Theodoric II submitted to Emperor Majorian, after which Romans and Visigoths alike moved again towards Galatia. The Suebi so far remained a distinct group from the local Roman population and their administration was light-handed. Thus, Rechimund at some point murdered local officials in Lucus and after some back and forth the city was lost to the Romans. Fighting also occurred in Lusitania where Fumar replaced the murdered Maldros. Later, this king captured Hydatius, a pro-Roman clergyman and the main chronicler of the history of the Suebian kingdom. Soon, external pressure lessened and after some more clashes, diplomatic channels reopened with the Visigoths. A certain Resismund, perhaps the son of Madras, married a Gothic noblewoman and became king of the Suebi. Despite a Galatian rebellion, he was able to reunite the opposing factions after the latest years of chaos. The new Gothic influence was particularly felt when a missionary sent by Theodoric started the conversion of the Swabian nobility from paganism to Arian Christianity. Resismund was not a puppet, however, and after having made peace with the Galatians, he launched new military operations. In the ever-contested province of Lusitania, the city of Conimbriga was razed, followed by the surrendering of Olisipo by a local named Lusidius. It was in 469 that the writings of the chronicler Hydatius suddenly ended. With such a disappearance, the history of the Swabian kingdom entered an obscure period of 80 years, of which very few details survived. The names of some kings of that period were recorded, with almost nothing to show for it. During that time, Arian Christianity solidified itself among the elite of the kingdom. Meanwhile, Galatia saw the arrival of Romano-Briton refugees who fled the Anglo-Saxon invasions in Britannia. The kingdom re-emerged in the sources in the 550s, coinciding with the Eastern Roman reconquest of the south of Hispania. 
It was thus, during the reign of Shararic, that a Roman bishop arrived in Galatia. For the Suebi, he was to initiate the conversion from the Arian to the Chalcedonian branch of Christianity. In time, this bishop would become known as Martin of Braga. It is said that the conversion of the Swabian elite was brought about when the king's son miraculously healed from leprosy with relics of the saint Martin of Tours. Under Ariamir, the kingdom further embraced the Roman faith. The first council of Braga was convened. The aim was to root out heresies such as Priscillianism and to take decisions on various religious rules. Theodemir was the first confirmed non-Aryan Christian king since Rikaya. He called the First Council of Lugo, which reorganized the administration of the church. New dioceses were created inside the kingdom. Now, the new Visigothic king, the energetic Leo Vigild, started attacking the Suebi, causing territorial losses. Succeeding Theodemir, Miro convened the Second Council of Braga. There came 12 bishops from all corners of the kingdom. It included Mayloc, who represented the see of Britonia and its Romano-Briton population. Overseen by the prominent figure of Martin of Braga, the council discussed and they expanded the decisions taken 11 years earlier during the first council held in the capital. Responding to the Visigothic offensive, Miro launched his own military campaigns. He invaded the lands of Cantabria and battled around the border regions with the Goths. Leovigild's counterattack stripped even more lands from the Suebi while reasserting Gothic influence on Cantabria. Envoys were sent to one of the Frankish kings, but were captured on their way. Never stopping, the Gothic king campaigned dangerously close to the capital, taking Urens and its local lord. Miro had no choice but to bend for an unfavorable peace treaty, which at least gave his kingdom some respite. When Prince Hermenegild converted to Chalcedonian Christianity and rebelled against his father Leovigild, both Romans and Suebi pledged their support. Three years into the rebellion, Seville was besieged. Miro arrived in the region but Leovigild forced him to submit to Gothic power. The king returned to Galatia and died of illness. He was succeeded by his young son, Eboric, who confirmed Swabian submission to the Visigoths. Rejecting this outside influence, Eboric's brother-in-law, Odeca, revolted. He was able to usurp power and banish the boy to a monastery. To assert his legitimacy, he married Miro's widow. Leovigild, however, had by now vanquished his rebellious son and was now free to punish Odeca's defiance. Yet again, war broke out between Goths and Suebi. This war, however, was to be the last as Odeca was defeated, captured and exiled. As the Visigothic kingdom annexed Galatia, a certain Malaric tried to offer further resistance as the allied king Guntram invaded Septimania. Prince Recared repelled the Franks, while Malaric was overwhelmed and captured. Leovigild reinstated Arianism in Galatia for a brief period of time. Years later, it was the third Council of Toledo, held under his son and successor, Recared, which ensured that the entire Iberian Peninsula would now take the path of Chalcedonian Christianity. Among the main post-Roman kingdoms, the one of the Suebi, due to its peripheral location, remains the most obscure. Early in its existence, it almost succeeded in establishing dominance over Hispania. In the end, it would remain a regional power until its fall. Yet inside Galatia, the Suebi left their mark as a people and a culture, 
influencing the region. For centuries after, and as the chapters of history progressed, the mountains of northern Iberia would remain a deciding factor in the changing geopolitics of the peninsula. <laughs>